Wandami Bante. Uh, good morning, everyone, and good evening for everyone in the West. Welcome to the lesson on classification of 89 cheetahs. Today's session is scheduled to last one and a half hour with 15 minutes on coursework and remaining 40 minutes on Q&A. I'm Tam. I am the meeting co-host who will be helping Bante and everyone in today's session. May we invite Bante to start the teaching, please? Sadu, sadu, sadu. Sumangalo Yangalo. This is auspicious time to study Bidama. So let's start our study by paying homage to the Buddha reciting the Mordasa three times together. Namo dasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo dasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo dasa bhagavato arahato Sama Sambuddhasa. Okay, this is our number four phase of my study. So, in this lesson, I'm going to talk about the classification of 89 consciousness. As you know, we have already study about the ultimate reality. Among the ultimate reality, the past types of ultimate reality is consciousness, which is called citta in Pali. So we are going to start our study of ultimate reality from the past ultimate reality of consciousness. So in this lesson, when we are going to when we are studying about the past ultimate reality of consciousness, we need to keep you know, we, we, one thing need to keep in our mind is the characteristic of consciousness. When we call citta or consciousness, that is the basic elements, basic elements, which is known as citta or consciousness. The characteristic of that consciousness is knowing the objects. So consciousness or citta, just do the action of knowing the objects. So if we say through the characteristic, the citta is only one thing. It means the every types of consciousness, when we divide it into different way of classification, the different kinds of classification come into our study, but all the consciousness have the same characteristics. That is knowing the object. So we can say consciousness is one, only one thing which knows the object, which cognizes the objects. <clears throat> that is the first thing we have to understand about the consciousness. Although it is only one, according to the characteristic of knowing the objects, it can be divided into different types according to accompanied manifestos, chitasika. So, by way of nature, nature, the law of nature, the consciousness and mental factors comes together. This means they arise together, six together. So this is their nature. That's why whenever consciousness, citta arise, the mental factors accompany to that consciousness. So they are arising in the Groove, we can see that is the, the mental group or mental cluster. So they arise in the group and they share the same lifespan, arise together and 
six together, banish together. By seeing the accompanied manifestor, we can classify the types of consciousness into different kinds. So here are some method of classification of jitta. So classification by way of planes. So we already study about the 31 plane of existence. So consciousness can also be classified according to by way of planes. And the second type, consciousness can be classified with respect to it is kind or it is nature, which is called Pali in Jadi. So in common things, we can classify the peoples who come from where, according to the location and according to the, the family types they were born. So this is what kind of people or the, they, they are what kind of people like this. We can classify in the same way we can make the group or we can make the classification according to the nature of the consciousness and the classification according to it is roots so the roots are i will introduce the roots in this lesson uh, six types of roots and according to these six types of roots the consciousness can be classified into group and also accompaniment feeling. So what kind of feelings accompany to that consciousness? And then we can name and we can make a group. So this is the way how that the one types of consciousness can be the different types or can be classified into different categories. So before we continue our classification of consciousness, we need to know the walls, the three types of walls, loka, the sata loka, sata loka. Here, sata is living beings. So loka is wall. So sata loka means the wall of living beings. And this, the wall of living beings refers to the, the living beings. So living being is nothing but the process of mentality and the process of materiality coming together they are called beings living beings so if we classify the living beings we get the process of mentality and the process of materiality only these two things arising together at the same time and they are named up living being so the in this case sata loka reference to their being and also reference to the process of mentality and materiality. And another word, Okasaloka. Okasaloka is defined as the physical universe. So in other words, it's called the planes of existence. We already studied 31 planes of existence. That is Okasaloka. And the last one, Sankara Loka the wall of formation. So that's the wall of formation include the all types of condition of phenomena of mentality and materiality. So it's um, including within the five aggregates of clinging. So here we have to uh, understand the, the wall clinging. So that's why uh, the aggregate was attached by the craving and round view. That is called the aggregate of clinging. And we will clarify later the five aggregates of clinging. So all types of phenomena, mentality, mental phenomena and material phenomena are called the Sankhara Loka. So this is the, the three types of Loka. Okay, we can continue. The classification by way of plane because we already study about the 31 plane of existence, we can connect with that lesson two. So these four types of con consciousness depends on the plane of existence. Maybe you can recall the classification about the plane of existence. 
the lowest rams lowest classification is the kama wachara or kama 11 kama sings peers in english since peer plane of existence and if we go up that is the five material sphere that is called rupa vachara loka rupa bhumi and then arupa vachara bhumi this is four arupa vachara realm of existence this immaterial sphere of existence so we have three category of existence and plane of existence but here the consciousness are four types. So the classification one, two, three comes according in accordance with the classification of plane of existence. So the first one is Kama Wachara Chitta. And the consciousness that have their domain. So their domain means they always move about in in their that place where in the sensuous plane of existence. But not, they, they cannot, they, they are not arising only then, only these plane of existence of sensual planes, but they can arise in the Rupa Vajra or five material sphere or Arupa Vajra immaterial sphere, some of them, but not all and also not, not many times, only sometimes, a few times. So mostly these types of, the first types of consciousness arise in the sensual plane of existence. That's why they are named as Kama Vajra Chitta. So that is sensual, uh, sensual pure consciousness. Then the second type also have the same definition, just change the five material sphere as their domains, their place to move about or frequently arise because the the wa or vajra. So the first type, kama vajra, is the combination of kama, the wa kama, and a vajra. So kama can be divided into two. The so karma, sometimes the word karma refers to the craving, which is the subjective sensuality. So karma refers to craving, subjective sensuality, which can crave to, to the objects, which can attach to the objects. And another time, the word karma refers to the five external six objects which is called the form, sound, smell, taste, and tangible objects. So in this way, we can understand the word karma into two definitions, craving and five external sense objects. So karma and avatara here in this case, the first meaning of karma and craving, avatara, moving about him. So the craving is running around, that's the karma vachara chitta and also the karma vachara craving around in the sensuous plane of existence. So in this connection, we can understand the definition of karma vachara. In the same way, rupa vachara, here rupa, rupa is the, play of, uh, the plane of existence, that is the fine material sphere of existence. The consciousness that frequently arise in the fine material sphere of existence is called Rupa Vajra. Sometimes they arise in the Kama Vajra realms and also Arupa Vajra realms, but mostly arise in the fine material sphere. That's why they are named as Rupa Vajra Chitta, fine material sphere consciousness. The third one, Arupa Vajra consciousness is they have their domain in the immaterial sphere of existence. So they mostly arise in the Arupa Vajra realms, which is called the immaterial sphere 
of existence. Sometimes they arise in the Kama Vajra and Aruba Vajra, but not many times. That is why they usually arise and frequently arise in the Aruba Vajra realms. Thus, they are called Aruba Vajra Chitta or immaterial sphere consciousness. The last category of consciousness in this classification is Logodra Chitta, supra mundane consciousness. So here the word Logodra can be divided into two, Loka and Uttara. Loka refers to the war and, and three types of war. And Uttara is beyond, going beyond or transcended to. So that this war directly related to the meaning of Nibbana. So can refers to the Nibbana, but not only Nibbana, the, the consciousness, so the types of consciousness that directly accomplish to the realization of Nibbana can also be called the Lokudra. So altogether, here in this case, the, because we are talking about the consciousness, and Nibbana is not consciousness, it is another category of ultimate reality. That's why Nibbana will not be included in this case. So only the consciousness will include in this case. And for the definition of Lokuttara. So find the Vajitta together with the Vajitta, Lokuttara Chitta. It refers to the types of consciousness that only accomplish the realization of Nibbana. So, that types of consciousness, we, it is known as the path consciousness, mega chitta, and Christian consciousness, phala chitta. Altogether, eight. These eight kinds of consciousness take nibbana as their object when they arise. That's why we can say these are the consciousness that directly accomplish the realization of nibbana, taking nibbana as its object. So this is the, the classification according to the plane of existence. Then another classification, before we go to another classification, we need to know the karma and results, the two types of karma and two types of results. So the karma, at the beginning, we need to understand the definition and the precise meaning of the Paliwa karma. The Paliwa Kama means the abolition activities. Abolition activities. So it is a kind of mental activities. The abolition is one of the 52 mental fetters. So, abolition activities is the whatever activities of physical activity, bhava activities, or mental activity caused by the abolition of together with the volition. That's called the volition activities. That is twofold. So the first one, kusala gamma. And second, akusala gamma. Kusala gamma means the volition activity associated with wholesome consciousness. So wholesome is kusala, wholesome is kusala. And I will define the meaning of the war wholesome, wholesome or kusala in this slide. But here, the wholesome conscious, the abolition activity associated with wholesome consciousness is called the kusala gamma, and abolition activity associated with unwholesome consciousness is called akusala gamma. So, in this case, we can understand, we can make the conclusion about the gamma. Gamma is only two, whether it is wholesome or unwholesome, only two types. Uh, there's no gamma which cannot, which, which is not identified as the wholesome or unwholesome. So the gamma can, must be identified whether it is wholesome or unwholesome, and it must be any of them. It means there's no neutral. Okay, so like the gamma has two types, the, the result of gamma, which is called the vipaka. The Paliwa vipaka means the result of something. So 
here the result of gamma is also divided into two. So kusala vipaka chitta. So here in this case we are going we are studying about the chitta. We refer to the uh, the consciousness, but there can be the vipaka. Uh, there can be the vipaka that is called the materiality included in the materiality is the results. So, but is they are not included in the vipaka chitta because they are not consciousness. So here, kusala vipaka chitta and akusala vipaka chitta are the two types of resultants. So kusala vipaka chitta refers to the resultant consciousness of wholesome karma. So these are the pro products of the wholesome karma. The first type of karma produced is the first type of resultant consciousness. So in this way, we can understand wholesome and result resultants of wholesome. And in the same way, in second way, the Akusala Vipaka, here also we can make the, uh, we can add the word Chitta. Akusala Vipaka Chitta. So the resultant consciousness of unwholesome karma. So that is the products of the second types of karma, Akusala Karma. So Akusala Karma produce Akusala Vipaka consciousness, Akusala Vipaka Chitta. So in this way, we understand cause and effect relationship in the karma and it is result. So wholesome produce the wholesome come or wholesome resultant. And unwholesome karma produce unwholesome vipaka, unwholesome resultant. In this case, we get the karma and result. And also three types: wholesome, unwholesome, and resultant. So wholesome and unwholesome are a causative and we bug uh, uh, effect of these causative activities. Another category of chitta also have, but next slide will be more clear, but just introduce the kiriya chitta. So that is the functional consciousness. This can, this is not included in the wholesome types or unwholesome and also non-productive. So, unproductive, they cannot produce anything. So they, 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 these types of kiriya jitta are out of the, these two classification of karma and result, not related to the karma and also not related to the vipaka. So we have to understand this is also another classification of consciousness. In this way, we will have the four types of consciousness. So here classification according to the jati comes. So four types of consciousness according to the jati. Jati is there is nature. That's why we will we will understand according to their nature. So the first type is kusala chitta. As I said, the kusala gamma and kusala chitta. So the volition negativity based on the consciousness kusala. Uh, kusala uh, together with the consciousness of the wholesome, they are called the kusala chitta karma. So the the kusala chitta, akusala chitta here. Okay, so akusala chitta is unwholesome consciousness. This is the translation. So in order to understand the meaning, what is unwholesome, and what is akusala, uh, the definition is the mentally unhealthy mentally unhealthy, and also morally blameworthy. This is called the Sawadza in Pali. So this is the first part of the, uh, the, the characteristic of unwholesome, unwholesomeness. Whenever unwholesome consciousness arises, and we can recognize it has the nature of mentally unwholesome, men mentally unhealthy, and from the more more perceptive, it is blameworthy. That is the characteristic of akusala unwholesome. And another part of the characteristic of unwholesome is it is productive of painful result. It means the, that can produce the painful result. That is called in Pali dukkha vipaka. So this together with these two together coming together with these two are 
Sawaja Duka Vipaka. These are two, two feathers of the characteristic of unwholesome consciousness. Whenever a types of consciousness arise, you can check whether it is unwholesome or not. If it is unwholesome, there must be the characteristic of mentally unhealthy or morally blameworthy. And it must be productive of painful result. That is unwholesome. That's why you can identify the consciousness with these two characteristics. This is unwholesome. So that unwholesome consciousness always accompanied by any of the three unwholesome roots. So here, unwholesome roots are three, greed, hatred, or delusion. So they, these three will not come at the same time, but you can find any of them. So unwholesome consciousness has these roots. When you can find the, the root greed as it is roots, you can identify this is unwholesome. And when you observe that types of consciousness, it has that, that characteristic of uh, mentally unhealthy, morally blameworthy, and productive of painful result. So hatred, delusion, the same. So this is the first type of consciousness according to the kind of, uh, according to uh, the nature. The second type of consciousness is akusala citta. Akusala citta, sorry. Akusala citta, it is translated as the wholesome consciousness. So when you observe the wholesome consciousness, you, you understand the characteristic that is the mentally healthy and morally, from moral perspective, the morally blameless. That is called anawaja in Pali, anawaja characteristic. And also that consciousness can produce the pleasant result, sukha vipaka. So you can identify any types of consciousness as kusala by this characteristic. If it is mentally healthy or morally blameless and also can produce the ple pleasant results, that is called kusala. And you can identify this is wholesome consciousness. And when you follow the roots, you can find three roots, non-greed, non-hatred, or non-delusion. That is, these, they are the roots of wholesome consciousness. So, but in this way, we can identify the wholesome consciousness, kusala citta. And the third types of consciousness is vipaka citta. As I mentioned, the kusala and akusala, these two are the causative. And vipaka, the result of the cause of wholesome and unwholesome. So here, the third type of consciousness, the result and consciousness, result of what? Result of wholesome or result of unwholesome. That is the wholesome, and this is the result and consciousness. That's why this, this, the third type of vipaka consciousness arise through the ripening, ripening of karma. So volitional activity, it is done and wait for some time or, some, or wait for the time according to its nature to be ripened. Then when it is ripened, it's produced the, the result. So one of the result is the result and consciousness. Here come up, refers to the volition and action. And the last types of consciousness in this classification is Kiriya Chitta, translated as the function of consciousness. It's neither karma nor karma result. So no karma, no karma result, but it is a kind of consciousness. It has the characteristic of knowing the objects. So that is mere activity, just the mental action it is not included in karma or not in karma result. So it is activity, mental activity, mental activity, but not capable of producing karma result. So that types of consciousness cannot be included in the causative group because that cannot produce karma results. In this way, we have the four category of consciousness according to the classification of jadi. So unwholesome, 
unwholesome resultant functioning. So unwholesome, if we divide it, uh, 89 consciousness into these four types, we get the number, the unwholesome consciousness 12, wholesome consciousness 21, and resultant consciousness 36, functional consciousness 20. In this way, the 89 consciousness is divided into four groups. So here, unwholesome 12, unwholesome consciousness is unwholesome gamma. You can identify unwholesome gamma. And wholesome 21, we can say the wholesome gamma, um, but not all can produce uh, the, the plane of existence. The four mega chitta just produce the fusion consciousness, the phala chitta. But anyway, we will understand that later. So here, the groove. So we, if we make the groove into two from four, four classification, the last two, resultant and functional, they are not wholesome and unwholesome. That is why uh, we, can, we can make the groove in the another type, that is resultant consciousness and functional consciousness, because they are not included in the wholesome and unwholesome, they are named of indeterminate, abhyagata. This is according to the classification of the tika matika, that is called the tri system of classification. So in this system, they, all the ultimate reality are divided into three and named this is what, and this is what, and this is what. And so classification of tika, so tri, so tika matika, and Dhammasangani is mentioned. And in this way, we can understand wholesome, unwholesome, resultant, and function into four. And also we can understand wholesome, unwholesome, and abhyagata. In the nature, these two are not set as wholesome or unwholesome. That's why they are indeterminate abhyagata. So this is just, you know, the later I have the, the chart to clarify. And, and but here I like to introduce the classification in detail uh, about the unwholesome, wholesome, resultant, and functional. We get the number here. And how we get that number here, I mentioned that Agusala Chitta included in only in the sense field consciousness according to the type, but they can arise in other realms too and from material sphere, fine material sphere, and also immaterial sphere, and the Agusala Chitta can arise. Agusala Anhosan consciousness can arise. But in their classification, they are usually or frequently arise in the sense peer plane of existence. That is why they are included under the classification of sense peer consciousness. And okay, all 12 types of consciousness, sense peer consciousness, we are trying to relate it to uh, two types. So the classification under the related to the plane and the classification related to it is nature. So according to it is nature, the Akusala, it is the name Akusala come and all types of unwholesome Akusala consciousness are sense peer according to the plane of existence. And in second types, wholesome consciousness. So divided into different category according to the plane of existence. So according to Jadi, we can say that is, so the wholesome consciousness, Kusala Chitta, uh, divided sense peer wholesome and fine material peer wholesome and also immaterial peer wholesome. It means wholesome consciousness are uh, connected to the three category of plane of existence. So we can find in the sense peer also eight types of wholesome consciousness and five material peer wholesome five, immaterial peer wholesome four, and also supra mundane. It is out of the uh, plane of existence. So altogether 21 types of consciousness come in this way. And Result and consciousness also the same. It's, it's come produced by the wholesome and unwholesome. So wholesome consciousness related to 
all types of plane. So resultant consciousness also related to the all types of plane. But since pure resultant consciousness, 23, because the wholesome resultant and unwholesome resultant come together. So it's much more than wholesome number. So become 23. And five materials pure, just resultant of wholesome. That's why only five, same as the wholesome. There's no uh, in five materials pure and wholesome resultant. Only wholesome resultant. That's why we get the, the same number. So here, five material sphere, wholesome five, and also five material sphere, resultant five. In the same way, in material sphere also, or that is escape from the uh, productive of unwholesome. That's why same of the wholesome consciousness. So in material sphere, wholesome four, at the same, in the same way, in material sphere, resultant also four. Okay, so, uh, Supramundane resultants are four. So altogether, 36 resultants, Vipaka Chitta. Then the functional consciousness, since we are functional consciousness, 11 and five material sphere functional consciousness, five and immaterial sphere functional consciousness, four. And there is no Supramundane functional consciousness. So in this way, we classify the according to the it is nature according to uh, jati so unwholesome wholesome resultant functional we will uh, study more about the detailed number and detailed classification in next lessons so wholesome unwholesome consciousness and wholesome consciousness in this way we will take our time in the studying of uh, detailed classification of consciousness. So you don't need to worry. So just get, get the number. It's okay for this time. So another classification I like to introduce that classification according to the rules. So consciousness also has their rules, accompanying rules. So these are six types, Loba, Dosa, Moha, and also Aloba, Adosa, Amoha. So these are six types of rules. Depends on the rules. So the, we, uh, we can name, we can get the name Ahedukha Chitta. So consciousness can be classified as the Ahedukha or the second type, Sahedukha. Ahedukha means rootless consciousness. There is no root. So no rules means not related to the any of six rules. That types of consciousness are called the Ahedukha Chitta and rootless consciousness. And another type related to that root, any of the root, is called the Sahedukha, the consciousness with root. So it is accompanied by the root. So this classification comes according to the root. So whenever when you check the in the accompaniment of feathers of that consciousness, if you can find any of the six, you can name that is Sahedukha. You cannot, if you cannot find any roots in accompaniment of feather, that kind of consciousness is called Ahedukha, the first type. And if you can find any of them, that types of consciousness is called Sahedukha. So, among the Sahedukha in second types of consciousness, that we can find, if you, we can find among the accompaniment of Feda, if we can find only one root, it is called the Eka Hedukha because Eka is one. So one root Eka Hedukha. If we can find two roots, that is called Dri Hedukha. So two roots consciousness, two rooted consciousness. And that the last one, if we can find the three roots among the six, among the Mandafedos, and we can name that consciousness as the Tihedukha consciousness. So this is the classification according to the root. So similarly, we have another classification related to the individual. That is uh, Ahedukha Bukala. We already introduced the 12 types of individual among them. And the, the lowest two are Ahedukha in Ahedukha ordinary person. So these are 
for Ahiduga because a uh, rootless individual, because their rebirth Lincoln consciousness, which is called the Bhattisandhi Chitta, is not accompanied by any of these six roots. That's why these person are called Ahiduga Pukala, rootless individual. And the others, apart from these two, other individual, you can say the Sahiduga Pukala, but there, in that classification of individual, we only name the Tihe Duka Pukala, and the others are Nuba Pasim, according to their attainment. But we can say the Tihe Duka Pukala also, these are individual with rules. With rules mean they are rebirth linking consciousness, which is called the Bhattisandhi Chitta, is accompanied by the rules. So, but their roots can be and be only the aloba amoha adosa because the loba dosa moha are unwholesome mental fetters. So unwholesome mental fetters cannot arise together with the Badit Sandi consciousness, which is called reverse Lincoln consciousness. These are types of the resultants. Okay, later we will class, class uh, we will identify more and more. So they are in that case, Dihe Duga, Jabal Ruta individual and Tribal Ruta individual. So there is no single Ruta individual. Okay, so we, we come here, uh, our chart. So here in this case, we already mentioned about the classification related to the uh, classification related to the plane of existence, classification related to the uh, to the nature Jati, and also classification related to the head to the roots. After that, we can conclude all of them in the chart. So here, the chart of consciousness, 89. So from the beginning, let's start from the beginning of the chart. The first, uh, the number one, Akusala, and uh, wholesome is 12. So we already get the number. So how it's become the two is Loba Mula is a greed rooted eight consciousness and Dosa Mula hatred rooted consciousness two and Moha Mula delusion rooted consciousness two. This, uh, this is the classification of two and wholesome consciousness that basically arise in the ordinary person. So because we have the greed, hatred and delusion, that's why the, the consciousness rooted in the greed, hatred, and delusion commonly arise to the Putuchana and ordinary person. So this is the first types of classification. So this is included in the sense pure. So in the right side of the chart, the cell say the karma vajra. So according to the, the plane of existence, this is called the uh, unwholesome consciousness, as I mentioned in the previous slide, the Kama Vachara, uh, the Akusala unwholesome consciousness are included under the classification of Kama Vachara. There's no Rupa Vachara unwholesome or Arupa Vachara unwholesome, only the Kama Vachara unwholesome. Then the second types of consciousness, Ahiduka. So this is related to the classification according to the root. So because they don't have any rules in among the accompaniment of fetters, that's why the consciousness are called the rootless consciousness. Yeah, in number, they are 80 in number. So if we divide it into this further classification, you come unwholesome resultant. So this is resultant, but produce it is the products of unwholesome cause. That's why unwholesome resultant. Agusala Vipaka 7. And the second type is rootless wholesome resultant. Here, Ahiduka Kusala Vipaka 8. These eight types of consciousness are products of wholesome. Products, product of wholesome. That's why they are called the wholesome resultant. But they don't have accompanying roots. That's why they are called rootless. In order to, to make difference between the other types of wholesome uh, resultant, other types of resultant here, and Kama Vachara resultant and Rupa Vachara resultant, Arupa Vachara resultant, they are also 
have another classification of another types of resort and consciousness in order to differentiate we at we need to add the wa rootless in pali ahituka so the second classification of ahituka consciousness is rootless and wholesome resultant consciousness this they are eight in number and the last type of ahituka consciousness is rootless functional consciousness here also we need to add the word rootless because there are another types of consciousness a functional consciousness in above three types also that's why in order to differentiate from them we we need to add rootless that's why rootless functional consciousness in pali ahituka kriya citta are three in number so all together we get the ahituka 18 consciousness so you don't need to worry what are these or like this and because we will take the different class the agusala consciousness for one day and ahituka consciousness one day in this way we will study more that's why just keep the classification in your mind it's enough for this lesson okay so another classification number three classification of consciousness is the kama vachara sobana so coming together kama vachara i already mentioned the consciousness usually and frequently arise in the since pure plane of existence is called the kama vachara so the new word sobana is introduced here sobana is beautiful here the the letter show the beautiful the sobana beautiful sobana consciousness beautiful consciousness so here the third type of consciousness is named of as the kama vachara sobana since pure kama vachara is since pure sobana is beautiful so all together 24 in number so how it's become 24 is much more easier than the previous two so wholesome kusala and resultant vipaka and functional kiriya the three types each of them has the eight in number that's why it becomes altogether 24 so wholesome produce the resultant but functional is uh, mental activities but is unproductive it cannot produce so this the last type kriya different from wholesome because it cannot produce and different from vipaka because it is not the products of wholesome so we have the three categories in kama vachara sovana since pure beautiful consciousness then we can continue to number four rupa vachara okay so the kama vachara consciousness here all since we are beautiful usually arise mostly arise in this since we are plane of existence 11 since we are plane of existence okay number four types of rupa vachara consciousness this is translated as five matrix pure consciousness 15 in number so this is also easy to classify the causative the wholesome five and resultant also same as five and kiriya functional this is the the third category also five in this way we can understand rupa vachara five material sphere sphere consciousness of 15. and the the number five classification arupa vachara translated as as immature sphere so 12 in number divided into three category each of them has the four so wholesome arupa vachara kusala or immature wholesome immature sphere consciousness number four and Vipaka number four and Kriya number four. Then the last type category, the last category of Lakuttara, Supramandane eight. So it has only two category of path and fruition. So path mega four and pala fruition four. Altogether eight Lakuttara chitta. In this way, we can get the 89 consciousness 
according to the classification of their nature and their roots by this, their plane of existence. So here we need to understand the lowest two, the first Akusala and Ahituka are collectively called uh, Asobana Chitta, Asobana Chitta, because they are not beautiful. Sobana is beautiful, the word art has the negative meaning. So Asobana means not beautiful. So not beautiful means the unwholesome consciousness are not beautiful because they are rooted in greed, hatred, and delusion, unwholesome mental fetters. That is why that consciousness are uh, regarded as not beautiful consciousness. And Ahiduka consciousness, although they are not rooted in Lava, Dosa, Moha, greed, hatred, and delusion, that they don't have any roots. Like, like this, they are like a floating plants in the water, no roots, they're not stable. That's why these Ahiduka rootless consciousness are also regarded as the not beautiful consciousness, Asobana consciousness. Now in number altogether, 12 unwholesome and 18 rootless become the 30 in numbers. Um, uh, Asobana consciousness, Asobana citta, not beautiful consciousness. So in this line, we can here in this column, we can understand the 54 sense pure consciousness. So it includes three types, unwholesome, roadless, and uh, since we are beautiful, 24. So unwholesome, 12, rootless 18, and since we are beautiful, 24, becomes the 54 karma vachara chitta, or since pure consciousness, because they usually arise or frequently arise in the is sense pure realms of existence, karma vachara. And also the number four and number five, rupa vachara, five material pure consciousness 15 and arupa vachara, immaterial pure consciousness 12 together, 27 consciousness are collectively called mahakata consciousness. So mahakata means sublane or sublime consciousness. So it's become in the higher ranks. Without the meditation practice, they cannot arise. So they need specific condition to become sublime. So they are regarded as the sublime consciousness. So together, the 54 since pure consciousness and 27 sublime consciousness coming together become the Lokiya Chitta. Lokiya means mundane. So only the, the category of supra mundane left. So if we classify, roughly classify consciousness, we get the, the classification only two. The one is one, one is supra mundane and another type is mundane. So here in this column, the five categories are included under the title of Lokiya Chitta, mundane consciousness. So we get the supra mundane and mundane. So supra mundane eight and mundane consciousness 81. It's become the 89 consciousness. In this way, we can understand the consciousness or classification of consciousness. So if you select off, if you are interested in the classification, to make by yourself, and you can classify according to the jadi in this chart. So you can check uh, according to jadi means wholesome, unwholesome, resultant, and functional, four categories. So you can select out from the from this chart. So the first class or twelve unwholesome already. You get the twelve, the first class, and what are the twenty one wholesome consciousness? You can select. So in second type, Ahiduga, there is no wholesome consciousness because this is the second type also resultants, not wholesome. That's why we can skip. So we can select the wholesome consciousness in the third category. Here, number eight. And here, the in number four, we get the five. So eight, five, 
And yeah, in Aruba Wetara, we get four. So eight, five, four becomes 17. And the mega also wholesome. So wholesome nature, that's why including mega, supramundane, wholesome consciousness. It becomes 21 wholesome consciousness. You can select from this chart. And in the same way, Vipaka, you can identify in this 20, 23 Vipaka of sense fear in this chart. And also altogether 36. So altogether 36 uh, result and consciousness. Here, the number, all the number can be identified in the chart. So we can select Vipaka result and consciousness in the chart here. The first classification, unwholesome resort. But although whether it is unwholesome or wholesome, we can identify as the resort. Unwholesome resort or wholesome resort, both of them are included under the classification of resort. That is why we get then number seven in the Ahiduga first, and here also resort. So in, among the 18 Ahiduga, there are 15 resort and consciousness. So we get the resort and consciousness for 15 and together with eight of the, this, okay. Eight of this Vipaga. It's become the 23 since pure consciousness. Then when we add more resort and of five material sphere, immaterial sphere, it becomes the 32 and together with the Palak Prussian consciousness, which is called the supra mundane resort and consciousness. So altogether, 36 Vipaka consciousness you can select from this chart. And also Kriya Chitta, altogether uh, 20 Kriya Chitta, functional consciousness. So there is no in Agusala, only this stuff from the Rootless consciousness, rootless functional three and kriya. So since here beautiful has the functional three altogether eleven and here five and kriya functional four. This become the twenty. So there is no uh, functional consciousness in the supra mundane. In this way, we can identify the classification of consciousness according to. It is nature in this chart. And also here only Aheduga only eight, 18. So if you take off 18 among the 89, there will be 71 consciousness. 71 consciousness are Sahiduga. So you can identify Aheduga and Sahiduga. So Aheduga 18 and Sahiduga with roots become 71 because the rest all including uh, Agusala or Gamma Wachara Sobana, Ruba Wachara Sobana, Aruba Wachara Sobana, Lakutara, Asahi Duga, because here the Ahi Duga is select out already. In this way, the classification of according to the Hetu also identified by this chart and according to the plane of existence. So here, Gamma Wachara, the Gamma Rams, and here, Ruba Wachara, according to the Rupa Rams, Aruba Wachara according to the Arupa realms. So Lakotara is out of the plane of existence because is Lakotara itself is go beyond the world, go beyond the plane of existence. So in this way, we can understand the classification of 89 types of consciousness. Here we need to, we need to understand the usage of the Mahagata. Here I say the Mahagata in the footnote here. 15 fine material sphere consciousness and 12 immaterial sphere consciousness are collectively called Mahagata Chitta. This 20, 27 sublane, lofty or exalted consciousness because free from hindrances. So through the practice of concentration meditation or samatha meditation, the, the meditator suppress the hindrances and then he attain the Rupa Vachara. It is the absorption state of concentration which is called known as the jhana 
So Rupa Vajra Jana and Arupa Vajra Jana, they are called Mahakata Chitta, Sublime Consciousness. Okay, for this lesson, it is enough to, to explain about the classification of 89 types of consciousness. But we will classify more and more in the following classes in detail, one after another. Okay, I'm going to stop here my explanation. So we will continue to the question and answer session. Thank you, Bhante, very much for your teaching today. Okay. Um, may Bhante lead us in making aspiration and sharing of merits, please. Okay. Good, okay. So please repeat after me. So, Imina Punyagamina. Mami Bala Samagamo Sadam Samagamo Hodu Yawa Nibana Badiyam Idami Bunyam Asawakaya Waham Hodu Idami Bunyam Nibana Sapacheo Hodu Mama Bunya Bagam Sava Satanam Bajimi Isabi Samam Punya Bagam Lavandu Sadu Sadu Sadu. Okay, may all be happy and happy in your life. Thank you, Bhante.